welcome back to Rise and Thrive. This is Diana Fumbilua, and I am super excited to be back here and to bring you wisdom conversations that will transform your lives to become more like Jesus and to walk in the destiny that he has designed for your life. Today, I am super excited to have in the studio a woman that I've been looking forward to having here, but I finally managed to get her. So without further ado, I just want to introduce to you our guest for today. And this is none other than Dr. Mwaka Twajirayesu. You are welcome to Rise and Thrive. Thank you, my beautiful, dynamic sis, mighty woman of God. I'm honored. I love wisdom conversations. I love what you're doing to help people, to support people, to guide people. So I'm so blessed to be here this evening. Oh, and I'm so, so glad that you could make time for uh, our Rise and Thrive family uh, because I know you are a busy woman, but I couldn't just help myself to tap into that wisdom that you have built over the years. Man, you've been in ministry. You've been on this scene for a long, long time. And so uh, I just want to let our audience know that you are in for great wisdom today. Uh, so take pen and paper and please share, share and invite someone and let them know that Rise and Thrive is on and we have none other than Dr. Mwaka Twajirayesu today as our guest. By way of introduction, I just want to read a bio about this wonderful woman of God because again, like I always say, we want to know where we are drawing our wisdom from. So I will read a, a bio of Dr. Mwaka. So Dr. Mwaka Twajirayesu is a trusted, authentic, prophetic voice to our generation, a much sought after international conference speaker, author, social media influencer, British trained lawyer, leadership developer, wow, mentor and spiritual mother to many. She is the founder of Fresh Aroma International Ministry, an apostolic and prophetic ministry that has taken her all over the world, preaching the gospel, accompanied by mighty signs and wonders. She is also the visionary of the Distinguished Women International, which has empowered and impacted thousands of women across the globe through conferences and prayer breakfasts. Wow, she is such a, a blessing to this generation. Through her We Care Foundation, she has fed and clothed multitudes of less privileged and less fortunate families in her nation, Zambia. And she happens to be in Zambia right now doing what she's called to do. And so we just celebrate the grace of God upon her life. Dr. Mwaka is the chancellor and founder of the School of Excellence Mentorship Institute that has trained and equipped hundreds of leaders from different backgrounds professions and nations. She has been happily married to Apostle Darius for 30 good years, and they reside in Dallas, Texas, USA with their five beautiful children. Please let's make her welcome on Rise and Thrive. Dr. Mwaka, you are welcome and we celebrate you, woman of God. Say hello to the people once again. Thank you again, my distinguished woman of God, Pastor Diana, and greetings, beautiful Rise and Thrive family. I know you're watching from different parts of the world, New Zealand, Australia, the UK, uh, the USA, Zambia, Kenya. Hello, hello. I'm so delighted to be here. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And we are super excited. So we'll go right into our topic for uh, this uh, particular episode. So we are talking about rising from obscurity to thriving in your destiny. I am so excited because this topic is almost all encompassing and I can't wait um, to hear what God wants to say to us today. So by way of uh, beginning our conversation, uh, Doc, I want us to touch 
uh, initially on the issue of identity, because I do realize that before you can begin to thrive in your destiny, you need first to know who you are so that you can fit into what God has called you to do, and then you can fulfill your destiny. So I want us to help our viewers, our listeners today with the issue of identity. How important is it for someone to know who they are? before they can begin to thrive in, in their destiny. Because in this day and age, we have people being told who they are, you right. know, as opposed right. to who they really are in, in God. So how yes. can you help our viewers kind of separate the identity that is imposed on them by society uh, versus the identity that God really has put upon their lives as who they really are in Christ? Excellent. Thank you again, uh, Pastor Diana. It is crucial for people, both men and women, young, old, doesn't matter the nationality, doesn't matter the denomination, to know their identity. Uh, uh, a lot of people have an identity crisis. And the problem is, Pastor D, if you don't know who you are, you, you end up competing, you end up secure you actually cause a lot of problems because you're trying to be like everybody. Instead of embracing who you are, instead of accepting whom God has made you to be, you start taking on those labels. You know, maybe uh, you've made some mistakes and people label you a drunkard, an addict, you're immoral. And if that's prominent in your mind, then you never thrive into your destiny so it is so important you know sometimes even in the body of christ we see a lot of competition and sometimes i'm like really mm -hmm. i mean each of us are so unique we have different gifts different mantles and that's the beauty of the body the differences we are there to equip but you see if i don't know who i am then i'm trying to be like pastor d Mm. And, and then people will miss on what I have to, what I'm, what I have to offer. So mm. to you, you cannot even fulfill destiny if you don't know yeah. who you are. You know. So mm. and I always tell people it's okay to admire. There are many people I admire. I learn from them, but I'm mm. not trying to be them. I'm yeah. very happy with who I am, and I've embraced who I am. And you know, when you've embraced who you are, you are even able to celebrate others. You're not intimidated because, you know, my goodness, we need that gift. We need that gift. And we need my gift, too. Yeah. So it is everything. I'm so mm. passionate, so happy that we are discussing this topic uh, on identity. You are not who the world says you are, viewers. Uh -huh. Even if you've made mistakes, maybe you're divorced. Maybe you're single and you're almost 50. It doesn't make you half a person. You are made in God's image and in God's likeness. You are valuable, you are significant, and you have a powerful purpose and destiny to fulfill. Mm, I, I really love how you've, you've brought out that aspect of being the body. You know, I, I, I was just imagining as you were talking that, you know, if we just had a body that has a head and two legs, imagine and, you know, how... how you know, it, it would look so uh, deformed. And, and so, like you put it, for the body to be whole, you mm -hmm. know, you think of it as if you're not walking in your true identity, you are impairing the body of Christ. And so That's the body can't function properly when it's not whole. Exactly. So you finding your identity, you are placing yourself in the right place in the body. And you're making the body whole enough to function and be effective. Uh, yeah. in the and, and, you know, it reminded me of uh, how, how the enemy likes to challenge our identity. And oh. um, he always wants to question us. Um, mm -hmm. you, you remember Matthew chapter 4 when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. And uh, Satan came to him and said, if you are the son of God, and he was coming after his identity. Um, mm -hmm. I want you to comment on that, Doc, because there are a lot of people who probably know who they are, but right now they are facing a challenge of feeling the pressure 
of being pushed into an identity that's not theirs simply because they've been offered some form of benefit. You know, mm -hmm. if you do this, then I'll make you this. Can you mm. comment on that uh, so we can help someone out there that's sitting in a dilemma of identity? Wow, that is so uh, powerful, Pastor D. And I think also, let me say, that's why even when we raise children, we have to drum into them they're beautiful, they're they're valuable, they're significant. Because when they don't have that foundation, then anything goes. You know, my, my middle son, who I was telling you earlier, who's just gone to college, he was telling me that from the time he was 13, peers at school, because the conversation started like this, I said, you know, how come you don't hang out with that person? And he said, mom, you know, that person used to offer me alcohol. That other person used to offer me drugs. And as young as he was, imagine at 13, he would just say, absolutely not. My body belongs to God. This is not what my parents taught me. I'm better than this. I'm an athlete, you know. So it is crucial not only to raise children to know who they are, but whoever you are watching, you know, you are better than what they are offering you. Sometimes that pleasure they're offering you is temporal. Your destiny is so much bigger. One of my favorite characters is Joseph. You know, Potiphar's wife was offering herself to him, but because he knew who he was, as beautiful as she was, smelling good, I love how he said, how can I do this evil against my God and against my master? He knew that one day I'm going to be a ruler. One day I'm going to be a leader. I'm not going to succumb to temporary pleasure for 15 minutes and throw away my destiny. So whoever you are watching, even that pleasure, that, that benefit, maybe it's a married man saying, you know, uh, I'll mm. take care of your rent, blah, blah, blah. Honey, you, mm. you deserve your own man. I don't even know why I went there today, but mm. because I've counseled so many young ladies who say, mm. I just have to stick with him. He's paying my rent. He's helping me with my kids' school fees. No, you're, you're not a second hand. You're not a leftover. You, mm. You're a woman of destiny. You're a man of destiny. You deserve better. Saying no sometimes is better than compromising and lowering your standard. Mm, mm. That That's actually very, very powerful. And I'm glad that you went there because <laughs> you see, <laughs> you see these, these are the things that people are struggling with. I mean, we live in a real world and if no one talks about them, we'll continue having casualties when actually we are sitting with the wisdom that could set someone free. And I yeah. think that one of the reasons that Rise and Thrive is here. You know, people need to rise from these mentalities and uh, wrong beliefs about themselves and begin to thrive in God. And, yeah. and, you know, especially in this day and age where everything goes, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the church now has lost its separating line. It's mm -hmm. almost like there's, there's a, a seamless integration with the world. Yeah. And yeah. so we really need to come back to a place where we begin to draw the line in the sand and mm. say, I am a child of God. And not because of anything else, but just because I fear God, I am not exactly. going to do this. You know, exactly. let, let that be the reason that makes you reconsider uh, your, your actions that might lead you into, you know, trouble. Uh, so I think we need to have the fear of God return back into the church. Uh, yes. If our identity is going to be set right, it has to be based on the fear of God. Because you can imagine, if someone doesn't fear the Lord, no matter how much we counsel them, no matter how yes. much we tell them this is wrong, exactly. if they don't have that personal conviction, you know, that they are not supposed to do a certain thing. They'll still drift back and do it. So exactly. I think it's important, even as leaders, church leaders, that we bring back the fear of God in the church by yeah. preaching the whole counsel of the gospel. I don't know why I'm going there, but we need to emphasize on things that are the foundation of our faith, you know, yeah. holiness, mm. you know, yeah. Uh, living, you know, right. I mean, walking in love, like, for example, 
um love has gone out the window in the church there's a lot of you know a lot of strife a lot of unforgiveness all mm. those things contribute to people now adopting an identity that is not rooted in the fear of the lord um yeah. but moving right along with our topic i just wanted you to take us through um how important it is for us to walk in our destiny and what is required for someone to really align themselves with what god has called them to do what are the things that need to be in place first before they even begin to thrive in their destiny and there could be someone out there asking how do i find my purpose how do i know this is what god has called me to do because uh we are talking about you know destiny and we are talking about identity and uh it's important that people understand that these two things cannot be separated mm. so uh you you spoke a little bit about joseph you know uh and maybe there's another bible character that we can relate to that can help us see how important is it is uh, to position ourselves correctly and to begin to walk in our destiny how can you help someone out there understand how important first of all it is to align with the will of god and his purpose but secondly how they can find that purpose and begin to walk in it because it's very important we alluded to the fact that we are a body and so yeah. if we are not functioning in our right position we are impairing the body and those Absolutely. that are sitting in the right position are being overworked because they have to compensate for what you're not doing as a member mm. of the body of Christ. Wow, wow. I, I, I'm loving this and I'm also gleaning from your wisdom, mighty woman of God. And I know our Rise and Thrive uh, viewers are tremendously blessed. You know, woman of God, it is everything to fulfill destiny. First of all, it is so fulfilling to be doing what God has called each of us to do. Mm. You, and it starts with a relationship with God because you can never give what you don't have. You can't take people where you've never been before. Mm. Uh, and when we talk about fulfilling destiny, walking in purpose, sometimes people think it's only preachers, but you could be a doctor uh th that's a very powerful grace right there because even there as you are healing people with medicine doing surgeries you are praying for them so your, your destiny could be a, a doctor a lawyer and you know you can tell from uh a young age uh and that's why even as parents uh we we really have to recognize the gifts of our children uh, uh, for example, you know, you were talking to my, my, my daughter, uh, Angie, everybody's so amazed that like, she's only 10. She shares my videos. She's like literally a PA, but it's interesting. Even as a toddler, she just loved the things of God, loved people. Two, three year old should be trying to help me serve guests. You know, maybe when they come to our home, so what we are seeing in her, it's been there. You know, at first we say, oh, this is so cute. But I realized even as she's grown, can you imagine woman of God? For example, the Distinguished Women Conference I did, when we were in the VIP room, she says to me, mommy, when you start praying for women with uh, who need miracle babies, I want to pray with you because I'm a twin and maybe someone is believing for twins with a straight face. I, I didn't even know how to respond to her. I just looked, I mean, and she was serious. And in fact, when I started now praying for people, I even forgot, my dear, I just saw someone next to me and she's there oh. <laughs> laying hands. So, I mean, already we can see that there's a call there. there there's an assignment. So viewers, number one, it's your, it starts with a relationship with God. And then number two, it's linked with what you love to do. I'm sure if Pastor D tells us about her childhood, I'm sure somehow she just, she loved people. She found even at a young age, just that compassion. So God will kind of give you a hint on what your purpose is and what your identity is and what your calling is. And it is crucial because the, I always say the body of Christ is like a beautiful buffet. 
the beauty of going to a buffet, it's the variety. Nobody wants to go to a buffet where everything is boiled white rice. No. <laughs> <laughs> we want to go enjoy the chicken, the lumanda, yeah. the fish, yeah. the nshima, you know, all of that. So number one, your call with God. Number two, what do you love to do? And mm -hmm. number three, find that thing. And you see, a woman of God, many times people look at both of you and I, and they are probably thinking, wow, they think it's overnight. No, it's been a journey. It's been, oh my goodness, we've come a long way, but because of consistency, loving God, I've found as we step out in faith, he empowers us, he helps us, he strengthens us, and he clears the way. So, so find, number one, your relationship with God is everything because it's out of that relationship you are able to release God's love, God's grace, God's wisdom. And then yeah. as you start walking towards your destiny, you find there's so much joy, there's so much fulfillment, and you must become so that others become. Because yeah. all of us, our destinies are connected to so many. If Pastor mm -hmm. D was not hosting this Rise and Thrive, imagine how many people would be missing out. So I pray that that has helped somebody who is watching us mm. this morning, afternoon, or evening. Mm. Yeah, very, very powerful, uh, uh, you know, steps to discovering your destiny. And um, I, I love how you've, you've actually addressed the foundation. Because, you know, mm. sometimes we, we think that um, it's not important to to instill certain values in children when they're still young. And, and I know um, growing up in Africa, you know, they teach you things like chores, okay? You have to, to clean the house, you have to do the dishes. And, and so by doing those things, you know, it teaches you responsibility. Yes. Okay? And then it teaches you commitment because you have to do it every day. And also it, it, it teaches you um, how to look after another person's uh, things because you live in your you live in your parents' house, so you you look after your parents' house so that when you have your own, you don't struggle. Okay, Thank so you. I live out here in the West. If I didn't learn how to clean, I wouldn't be able to clean my own house. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same thing with. Um, raising up children if you're training or mentoring anyone you know don't be afraid to to put them in a position where they are a bit uncomfortable and i think uh this is where it's important to understand that even as you are discovering your purpose and wanting to walk in destiny it's important to be teachable okay yeah. it's important to be teachable to put yourself under mentorship or under a coach that will help you, you know, uh, magnify and maybe define or drill down that purpose that you feel God has called you to, to, to fulfill in the earth. And uh, what I'm trying to bring home here is that in trying to find your destiny, understand that other people can enhance the clarity OK, of what you are called to do, because sometimes you think, oh, I think I like to sing, but I'm not very sure. And sometimes God will put people in your life that are God fearing, that can see that gift in you and yeah. be to, you know, help you find clarity and to confirm that that's what you're really called to do. Mm. I don't know what you can say about that one, Doc. It's very important, I'm sure, as as a mentor, as a transformational, you know, leader, you will understand that you have saved a lot of people, a lot of, you know, uh, mishaps or destruction by redirecting them to what God yes. has called them to do. Yes, yes. Pastor D, mentorship is crucial. Hmm. Actually, without mentorship, uh, we, we won't go far. We are what we are because of excellent pastors, yeah. uh, excellent uh, mentors. Mm -hmm. uh, even when you look in the Bible, that is the kingdom pattern. Mm -hmm. Without uh, Mordecai, Esther would not have made it as a queen. 
Uh, look at Joshua. The Bible says Moses laid hands on him and the spirit of wisdom came upon him. Elisha, where did he get the double portion of anointing? It didn't come from a tree. It came from serving Elijah. Uh, look at the Apostle Paul, how he would talk about my son Timothy, stir up the gift in you. So mentors are there to lead us, to guide us, to direct us. And I always tell people, why will you want to go off on your own? And here we are, we've, we've made many mistakes and we are, we're not there to oppress you. We're not there to shortchange you. We're there to say, listen, I tried that. It didn't work. Yeah. Do it like this. It, it saves you a lot of heartache and uh, it, it's a covering, you know. So mentorship is very important. Even in the world, they understand mentorship. The, the, the Hollywood celebrities we, we love, they, there's somebody who showed them the way, somebody who opened the door for them, somebody who led them. The athletes, I mean, my, my boys uh, play basketball and they'll tell you their coaches are so tough on them. Certain things they can't eat, they have to be in the gym every day, but they wouldn't be the great athletes that they are without the coaches, you know. Sometimes the coaches yell at them. I remember there was one game, Pastor D, I wanted to go there and say, can you stop shouting at my child? <laughs> And my son, knowing me, he looked at me with his face, Mama, please like, no. don't embarrass me. <laughs> I was like, no, no, I can't handle this. So later on, my son was saying, Mom, I could see you were about to come and spoil our game. <laughs> but he said, no, no, it's good for us. They, 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 in fact, he says, the more they shout at you, it's because you are such a good player. They're yeah. just bringing out the best in you. I'm like, okay, if you're putting it like that, otherwise <laughs> this crazy Zambian woman is going <laughs> to... No, I think it's, I don't think it's being crazy. I think it's a motherly instinct because I have it in me. My kids have to, to look at me and say, mom, no, <laughs> this is not the place. <laughs> Calm down, chill out. <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. but it's really important that you know we we submit ourselves to some form of discipline otherwise we would be so misaligned that we become oh. ineffective and oh I think, yeah when it comes to matters of destiny there can be no compromise we have to uh, undergo that training i think to, mm. to sharpen our skills because you know when you find out what your destiny is uh mm. it's one thing to find out but to sharpen your skills in that destiny, you know, in fulfilling that destiny, you need people like Dr. Mwaka is saying that will um, sharpen those skills, that will call out the best, you know, in you. And, yes. and so very important that we have mentors, that we have coaches uh, that will refine our skills and refine our gifts uh, in, uh. in the kingdom. Um, I, I wanted us to touch a little bit uh, on... Um, you know, when we talk about destiny and purpose, um, there are times that people will will find their destiny. And, um, you know, when, when you begin to rise, I always say that as, you're, um, as you walk in the glory of what God has called you to do, you become visible, okay? Mm. Become prominent. And... Mm. Uh, you you are still the same person a work in progress so as your greatness is magnified the higher you go so will your weaknesses be amplified i want you to help someone uh today that you know when you walk in destiny what are those things that will help you maintain that um level you know, the new level of operation once you are walking in your destiny. What are the things that can help you to um, make sure that you you guard what you have built um, in the Lord? Because uh, we are talking about experience here. We've, yeah. we've been through things. We, we've been beaten before. You know, we've been uh, challenged before. And, and you've talked about, you know, mentorship and how that it helps the younger generation come and walk where we've walked, but, you know, avoiding the experiences of making mistakes. So mm -hmm. how can you help a person out there that is 
thinking of, okay, I feel like I've found my destiny, but I'm coming up against a few challenges. So how do I handle that so it doesn't end up magnifying, you know, the wrong area in my life, magnifying my weaknesses rather than my strengths? Beautiful. My goodness. I love these, uh, this wisdom conversation. Well, we, we've talked about uh, mentorship. Sometimes a mentor is not always there to celebrate us, just like our parents. Sometimes mm. we'll say, look, we were not happy about this or we got beaten. It didn't mean they didn't love us. It means they wanted us to do better. I'll give you an example. There was a time I traveled quite a bit uh, in the USA. So I remember once my father in the Lord, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, he called me and I was really excited saying, Papa, I, this happened when I was in Tennessee and Atlanta is calling and I was telling him all my exploits and he was quiet on the line and I said, Papa, are you there? He said, yes, I'm here. And he mm -hmm. said, daughter, I want you to take three months off. Your husband needs you. Your mm -hmm. children need you. Your family need you. I'm like, what? But Papa, I have this invitation and here there are going to be 500 people. He kept quiet again. And I know him that when he keeps mm. quiet, it's like, daughter, we are not going there. And he mm. just said, did you hear what I said? And I said, Papa, yes. And I'm like, you know, inside I'm battling. How do I tell these people? There's this crowd waiting. Woman of God, I'm so glad I obeyed because the, those three months that I just put it, said no to all these invitations. Our marriage was healed and strengthened. Our children did better in school. So by the time I was going back on the road again, everybody's happy. You know, I, I was able to balance, balance, you know, many times people ask me, okay, you do so many things. How do you balance? Those days I was not very good in balancing. I was mm. kind of extreme in ministry, but now because of that experience, I've learned many times uh, to pull back. So mentorship, as we have said, is, is key. And sometimes your mentor is not going to tell you what you want to hear, but mm. obey. I, I've just given you my testimony. Number two, as you are rising, stay humble. Mm. You know, it, when people are clapping for you, telling you how great you are, it's so easy to become prideful and arrogant. Mm. But I always think of how Vashti, a beautiful woman, just because of pride, she refused to do what the king said, just to come greet the guest. She lost the throne because of pride. Mm. So was God's number one choice. But again, lost the throne because of pride. He was too much into what people are saying. And that's how David came on the scene. So the, uh, humility, beloved viewers, is everything. Always remember where you have come from. You know, as I was uh, as I was preparing for the Distinguished Women's Conference, a lot of my pastor friends were like saying, wow, I'm sure you're ready for the big crowd and, you know, you mm -hmm. got this. said I have no idea and I said I like to be nervous I like to be like I'm doing it for the first time because in my brokenness God will come through mm -hmm. so I never never ever get to the point where you feel you've arrived because that is the beginning of your downfall always be humble always depend on God always acknowledge God always remember where you are coming from Number three, accountability is everything. Have some accountability peers and partners, people mm -hmm. who can tell you the truth. You know, I have a friend of mine, Prophetess Michelle in Florida. She knows I tend to be a workaholic. She yeah. will call me and say, sis, no, you're not drinking enough water. You're not getting enough sleep. Stop trying to be superwoman. And sometimes I'm like, but I have to do this. She said, you are not superwoman, girl. Yeah. We need those people, women of God, who can yeah. speak. Uh, so those are the things that help you that even as you rise, you you, you know, you're, you're very much aware you're, you're human. Don't yeah. try to be superhuman. You know, we, we talk a lot, especially with my prophetic friends. Sometimes maybe you're ministering to people. God's given you, has shown you some things for others and some he hasn't. Don't, please do not prophesy. We always challenge each other. <laughs> 
<laughs> if you don't see anything. <laughs> I've told people, and one lady, woman of God, was so, you're cracking up. No prophet line. I just told her, my dear. I've never heard of that. That's really, it, but it's so accurate. It's <laughs> prophet line, yeah? Yes, yes, because, you know, sometimes God may show you about someone. And for another, mm. like I once told one lady, I'm sorry, I don't see anything. She was yeah. so said but for others you've seen what's wrong with me I, I said woman of god i want to get to heaven please i i don't want to lie and say i've seen wouldn't have not seen <laughs> and god has said what he has not said so she was not happy with me but i said my dear let my name remain in the book of life <laughs> <laughs> That's too high a price to pay, eh? <laughs> For fem. <laughs> oh, we are not going to go there, woman of God. We ain't. <laughs> and I guess, you know, it just kind of shows you the mentality of people nowadays that they want to hear God through another human being. But, you know, that's why it comes back to relationship. Because if you have a relationship with God, he will speak to you. Yes. He will speak to you. Very important that you cultivate your own communication with God because at yes. the end of the day, he is the designer of your destiny. So yes. who better to go to than the one that has designed where you are going? He My is God. the best guide. He is the best guide to get you there. So when he speaks through people, it's not all the time that he will speak through people. You know, I'm laughing because this, you know, being a church leader, you see a lot of these things. You know, it's like the prayer, you know, when you're praying for people, I'm sure you've noticed that sometimes there are people that will be in the prayer line, right? And they mm -hmm. only want to be prayed for by the pastor or the reverend. If the deacon or the elder is coming their way, they will move across to the other side. <laughs> So it's this mentality of thinking that the anointing resides with a particular person. And I know that there's a price that people pay to get to a certain level of anointing. Mm. Uh, and so we can tap into that level to kind of fast track our, you know, our growth or our process to where we're trying to go. But at the end of the day, you know, my husband always says, we can lay hands on you until you lose all your hair. But <laughs> if you haven't <laughs> decided in your heart that you want the transformation and you're willing to pursue it, even after that prayer, you know, encounter, then there's not much that you're going to accomplish. You know, destiny demands discipline. After you've been mentored, after you've been guided, what mm. are you going to do as an individual to make sure that you align or remain aligned with where God is taking you? Very, mm. you know, it's about responsibility. Take responsibility for your growth. Take yes. responsibility for developing your gift. You know, I'm mm. very passionate when it comes to coaching. You know, mm. I come across people that have so much in them and they don't mm. even realize until you I begin know. to ask them leading questions. And then they right. think, oh, actually, that's what yeah. I'm doing. Or that's what I like to do. And that's mm. where I'd like to go. And I've done A, B, C, D. I didn't know it was leading to that. So mm. they begin to take responsibility because they've gotten some clarity. So if you look at a mentor, a coach, that's a mm. person that will bring clarity. But after they've done that, you need to take responsibility and say, yeah. I, will, I will run towards my destiny like my yeah. life depends on it. Now, yeah. Doc, I wanted uh, you to touch on uh, some of the destiny killers. You know, you, you can arrive on the mountaintop, but there are certain things that can cause you to lose the influence that God has given you. And I'm sure you've come across maybe other leaders that have spoken to you about certain challenges that can actually kill your destiny. You know, we mm. talk about destiny helpers and then we talk about destiny builders. But there's also mm. destiny killers. And, and I yeah. think we would not do justice to the topic of destiny if we just tell people how to get there. But how do you stay there uh, when the going gets tough? What are the things or the, the non-negotiables uh, of um, staying influential in your field of calling? I can't remember which uh, prominent leader said this, you know, the three Fs that um make leaders compromise or fall from their position of influence it's finance 
female and femme. Maybe um, in, in discussing how we can help someone, you know, stay rooted in that position of influence, if we can touch on these three things, because I know these are the major, major things that have caused people to fall from grace or to fall yes. from the position of influence. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for that powerful question. And you've even given us the guidelines. So let's start with uh, finances. It, it's so important to have integrity yeah. when it comes to finances. There's got to be that transparency. We're not saying ministers, for example, should not be blessed, but mm. uh, have a financial team because finances has really put a lot of people in a very questionable manner and i've found pastor d when people lose their trust in you you yeah. can be powerful dynamic eloquent but once they lose their trust in you it's just downhill it's like you're you're, you're walking uphill and you never get there so when mm. it comes to for example ministry finances have a team maybe in the church uh you know every three months or uh, you know different churches are different there's got to be that transparency most mm -hmm. people do not mind of course their pastors being taken care of but it becomes a challenge when you know big chunks of money are missing mm -hmm. or we're getting money for this and then we it's not done you know so so that financial transparency and accountability uh, is very, very important. Number two, females. My goodness, boy, that is a whole broadcast <laughs> in itself. <laughs> I mean, and it is real. You see, women mm. love the anointing. Mm. And, um, you know, for example, for me, many times I find myself, I'm the only lady preacher among a lot of men. Mm -hmm. I, and I remember once, and I'm going to be real, real with you, audience, because maybe mm -hmm. there's some upcoming lady ministers. There's somewhere I went to minister in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, the servant of God and his wife were supposed to come pick me for dinner. Mm -hmm. So I, I come out of my hotel room and it's only the man of God. And he's and I'm like, where's your wife? And mm -hmm. his story. And I just said, anyway, I've left my coat. I'm going to go get my coat. Please go get your wife and I'll meet you guys in 20 minutes. My face in itself was like, don't even go there with me. We're, we're not doing no one-on-one -on -one dinner. That man was so terrified. And guess what, woman of God? He came back with his wife. Because I'm mm. like, seriously, I'm not going to. And yeah. just th there was just something, you know, I was like, no, 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 we're not going there. And uh, I make it quite clear that, listen, uh, I'm happily married. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, my husband may not be physically here, but people know, my dear, that is a no-go area. So mm -hmm. we, we have to put boundaries. We, mm -hmm. we cannot be giggling. You know, men are men, and sometimes they'll, you know, they'll want to cross. Give mm -hmm. them that look, uh, not today, bro, not tomorrow, and not next week either. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, love, I love that <laughs> yes i mean because if you start giggling oh you look you think i look pretty you you've just opened the door but mm. you know, you're not gonna you can say prophetess or pastor d you look nice but you're not gonna say you look sexy really no man of god yeah. <laughs> we are not gonna go there today tomorrow yeah. or next week <laughs> I, I love how you've highlighted, you know, the aspect of boundaries and, and, and it can be similar, you know, whichever way, you know, it goes. So it's um, if you're a female minister, like you, you, you are saying, I, I guess the, the onus is on you to actually erect that boundary because don't just assume that people know how to treat you. You need to show them how to treat you. Yes. You need to make it very clear that there are things that you won't do. There are boundaries you won't cross. And uh, you have to make it clear very quickly. I love the example that you've given that just initially when this person showed up by themselves, you, you, you know, uh, your antennas go up. And, yeah. and I know there's no human being on the face of the earth that will tell me that they don't sense it coming when it comes to this area. You Thank just you. know when when something yeah. is not innocent, you know. And so yeah. it crosses that um, 
barrier of, of innocence, it means yeah. you've allowed it. Exactly. You've allowed it because you know, you can see it. And, and so as, as women ministers, I think it's very important, like you've highlighted, that the anointing is attractive. Yes. And the, the the downfall of it is that it attracts both the, the right people and the wrong people. Absolutely. And people with pure motives and people with ill motives. So mm -hmm. it's very important to understand that it's attractive. And to also understand that when people are attracted to you, sometimes it's not because of you. It's because of what you carry. It's yes. So don't, yes. don't think because they're all flogging, you know, around me, it's because I'm cute. It's just because you carry the presence of God. <laughs> and when, it, when it comes to, to men, I usually say, you know, the Bible does say that avoid every appearance of sin, even if it's not sin. Yeah. If it looks like, you know, that it will stumble other people because Pastor D is too free with this man of God, then I need to draw my boundaries so that I don't stumble not just myself, but the people that look up to me, you know, exactly. so we live our lives as, as mentors, you know, once a mentor, always, always a mentor, people watch what we do, people yeah. you know, watch how we carry ourselves and how we speak. Everything about us is an open book for people to read. So we need to write our stories well. Um, yeah. And I was actually also going to say that, um, when it comes to counseling, just as a bonus, a hey, men out there, um, I know that women usually generally are more emotional when they're dealing with things. So they'll come yeah. into this and they're crying, they're vulnerable, they're weak, and you are the, you know, the, the strong man now that's offering the solution and you're giving the counsel. Be very careful, you know, have a principle of not counseling a woman by yourself or if yeah. you are doing that if you're going to do that because there's no other woman to be present with you as a man of god as you counsel a female then do it in an open space where yeah. the doors are open exactly and, you know there will be people maybe in the next room or something like that just put these you know boundaries that will help protect you you know exactly. from any appearance that will cause, like, you know, Dr. Marker has said, that will cause you to lose the, the respect of people because it's very hard to gain it back. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we talked about, you know, finance, female, and then femme is, is one that you addressed when you said, uh, don't get, you know, carried away with people giving you applause. And, and yeah. that's, that's one of the things that I talk about in my book, Woman of God, when, when I mm. talk about, be careful of the applause of men. I tell a story, um, an ancient African story of a mosquito <laughs> that went flying around. And when it came back home, it told the father, oh, wherever I went, people were clapping for me. I'm so good. I'm so, you know, good. And then the father turns to the baby mosquito and says, don't be deceived. They were not clapping for you. They were trying to kill you. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes. That's a good oh, one. Yes. Oh, my As goodness. You go out there. Sometimes what feels like applause uh, may not be applause. So you, you need to make sure that you are not moved by the applause of men because mm -hmm. um, it, it's only temporary and it leads to becoming overconfident, which mm -hmm. removes the grace of God from you. Yeah. Um, so as we get into the final minutes of our uh, conversation, Doc, I want you to just give us what is upon your heart regarding this topic of rising from obscurity into thriving, you know, uh, to thriving into your destiny. And uh, one of the things I wanted you to touch on as we close is, you know, obscurity is, you know, being hidden. So how okay. does one... Um, come out of that obscurity and become visible so that their gift can be served to the world and benefit someone out there. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. I can't believe it. We are concluding. It's, it's know, so right? enriching, so enlightening, <laughs> so refreshing. And I know our Rise and Thrive family are being tremendously blessed. You know, one of the, I think the strongest and most excellent quality any person fulfilling destiny can have 
is consistency. When you are consistent, you will definitely come out of obscurity into fulfilling destiny. You know, I remember, Pastor D, when I, when I started Facebook, and I think you remember my admin, uh, Pastor Shiko. Oh, yes. She's the one, yes, yes. Uh, she's the one who helped me get on Facebook. And I remember in the early days, I would be so discouraged. I'd be like, Shiko, nobody's liking, no one is sharing, you know, no one is commenting. And, and she really helped me and she said, Mama, don't even mind all that. You do what God has called you to do. You're an encourager, you're a builder, minister the word. Forget the likes, forget the shares, forget all that. Mm -hmm. The people are watching, they may not comment, they may not like your video, they may not share, but eventually they will. And so she really helped me. So I would come on, whether it was twice a week, and as I did it consistently, maybe it was every Tuesday, every Friday, slowly the numbers started coming, slowly started people started uh, commenting, you know, uh, and here we are today. So consistency will help you come out of obscurity into the path of your purpose. Also be faithful in little things. You know, the young ministers, they look at us and they want to pack out government complex. You know, and I'm like, hold on a minute, hold on. <laughs> we did not arrive here overnight. There's been a lot of prayer in the background a yeah. lot of fasting, a lot of correction. You heard me say when yeah. my papa made me sit down for three months. Uh, for another thing, I've been on radio for maybe like 12 years. And being on radio is not glamorous. It is hard work. It's being in the studio for hours so that there's content for the next three months. You see, people don't see the, the price that has been paid. So very, very uh, important, be faithful in little also be willing to do the work if you don't do nothing nothing will happen just like a business takes work ministry takes work marriage takes work to have a good relationship with our children it takes work i mean apostle and i, I don't know how many times we've woken up taking these boys across the country tournaments practices but it's built a beautiful relationship. As much as we are ministers of the gospel, they know, wow, mom and dad are there for us. They're interested in our passion, but it's taken a lot of work. So even when it comes to your purpose, you've got to work. Look at this beautiful broadcast that uh, we are on. She, Pastor D comes on every week. She has you know, a media team. It takes work. So be willing to put in the work. And you know, the Lord is so faithful. The Lord is so amazing. As you are faithful in what he has called you to do, he will give you the visibility. He will give you the exposure. He, he will give you the platform. When I started coming to Zambia in 2014, I, I didn't come saying, well, I wanna be famous. I want to, I didn't even know about government complex. I just said, Lord, you've we've done so much East Africa. Now you've said, pour into Zambia, establish fresh aroma. And that's what I did. And as I consistently, in obedience, in humility, did it over and over again, the Lord is the one who brings the growth. The, the Lord is the one who favors you and gives you uh, the visibility. The, the Lord is the one who brings uh, the expansion. Please, please, young ministers especially, do not be in a rush. Yes, I know you want to have big meetings. Yes, I know you want to be known. Let God do it. Because if you do it in your own strength, you will have to sustain it in your own strength. Mm -hmm. But when God does it, I tell you that the heavens are open. There's just that grace. So mm -hmm. don't compare yourself. Even we, our generation, we, we have our fathers, the Bishop Imakandos, the the Bishop Ngambis, who've gone yeah. way ahead of us. Mm -hmm. We are also still learning, still following their footsteps and staying mm -hmm. in our lane. We are not yeah. trying to outdo anyone. We're, mm -hmm. we're not trying to duplicate. We are staying in mm -hmm. our lane mm -hmm. and doing what God has called us to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow.
powerful. You know, I could I could listen to you all day. Aww. You're just full of so much wisdom. And and um, I'm sure our Rise and Thrive family have been blessed. And, um, you know, rising from obscurity, you know, is a timing thing as well. You know, in the fullness of time, you know, mm -hmm. God just introduces you you know, yeah. to the world, when you are ready, there's no way that you can be obscure, you know, yeah. and when yes. God reveals you to the world, you know, be consistent, be mm. committed, be teachable. Mm. We've heard the mm. wisdom from Dr. Mwaka today that, you know, your destiny is important for you mm. to, you know, to embrace so that you can be a blessing to your generation. You can fit yourself correctly in the body of Christ and begin to function in your God-ordained call. Um, so Dr. Mwaka, I just want to say thank you so much. You are such a tremendous, a tremendous blessing to the body of Christ. Thank wow. you for what you are doing. You know, you do all these things. And sometimes I wonder how you do it. But when I remember that it's by grace, yes. <laughs> then I see how you can do all this. I know right now you are waiting to go into an overnight prayer meeting. You lead a church, you lead a school, you hold these conferences. You are still, you know, your other arm is still in the U.S., still making sure that <laughs> things are right over there. May the Lord increase his grace on your life and may he Amen. continue to elevate you for his glory. May your ministry go to higher heights and Amen. may you see, you know, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And I pray, Rise and Thrive family, that you've been blessed. This is a woman you want to follow, you want to connect uh, with. Find her on her platform, um, Mwaka Twajirayesu, and she's also uh, on Distinguished Women um yes. platform find her follow her uh she is a powerhouse you know this is a conversation and we are sitting nice and cute like this but you should hear her preach go to her page when she is in preaching mode uh <laughs> she's oh. got that kingdom killer instinct so i just want to commend her to you you know, follow her, you know, she is a woman you can safely feed from. I've known her for years. Her ministry is solid, word-based, and uh, she is a phenomenal woman. Dr. Mwaka, once again, thank you for coming on Rise and Thrive. Oh, I will God. let you go. If you can say your final words to our Rise and Thrive family, and we will end the program. First, let me again say I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. I'm so appreciative that you are my sister. We are serving in the kingdom together. And right back at you, you are phenomenal, dynamic, intelligent, brilliant, distinguished, such a gift to the body of Christ. And even in this wisdom conversation, I've gleaned so much iron, sharpens iron, and we thank God for what you and Pastor are doing in New Zealand, really around the world, because media connects us. So I'm so grateful, and I can't wait. Uh, for part two, I think we will definitely oh, have. Yes, we need to come back. <laughs> yes. Because uh, we've touched so many areas that need to be topics on their own so that we yes. can really deep, drill deep. Um, yes. I agree. We need to do this again, and we certainly will. Uh, yeah. Thank you so, so much, Doc, for coming on here. And uh, Rise and Thrive family, this. Uh, brings us to the end of this week's episode. And I pray that you will join us again in a fortnight as I bring on another guest next week. Don't forget to tune in for the teaching session on Rise and Thrive. And so from me and my wonderful guest, Dr. Mwaka Twajira Yesu, who's been a tremendous blessing to us today, it's goodbye and God bless you. Bless you.